A light bar is that strip of flashing lights on top of a police car or emergency vehicle. The lights are high output LEDs, far more efficient and durable than incandescent or quartz halogen bulbs or strobe tubes. The mounting system is designed to withstand emergency high-speed driving. The LEDs are grouped by color within a module. Modules can be arranged in any configuration on the light bar base. The base mounts to the vehicle's roof via straps made of high-strength stainless steel. Those straps begin as flat pieces, laser cut to a starting shape. A 50-ton forming press bends them to the final shape, which fits the exact contour of the vehicle's door jamb. The light bar's white light modules fasten onto the base with the aluminum brackets this worker is assembling. These brackets also help draw out the heat the lights generate. This is critical because if LEDs overheat, they burn out. The base is made of extruded aluminum. This computer-controlled laser, working on six bases at a time, cuts out holes for venting and cables. The light bar has two cables, one running power from the vehicle's battery to the light bar and another connecting control switches on the dashboard to the light bar's electronic control board. An automatic machine measures and cuts the required length of each cable, then strips off a specific amount of the PVC outer jacket at both ends. This exposes three wires, two of which are insulated and inside a foil wrap. After stripping off the foil, an automatic stripping machine removes some insulation bearing the tin-coated copper wire within. Workers put contacts onto two of those wires, the ground and the power. Then press the contacts on securely with a crimping device. Next, they connect a terminal to the third wire, the shield drain. This wire reduces electronic interference from sources like the police radio. Now for the LED light modules, the main component of which is a reflector. They put the reflector's plastic body into the sealed chamber of a metallizing machine. The machine then releases argon gas, while applying hundreds of volts of electricity to a solid piece of aluminum. This vaporizes the metal into tiny particles, which a vacuum draws onto the plastic body in an ultra-thin reflective coating. To broaden the horizontal range of the reflection, workers install a device called a collimator. Then they take an LED light, put an electrical insulator on the back of it, and mount it inside a housing that's specially designed to remove heat from the LEDs. Then they install these assembled light components in the reflector. Install the connector that plugs into the wire harness that leads to the control board, and test the finished module. To assemble the light bar, they slide the control board onto the base, plug in the control cable that connects the board to the dashboard switches, install the power cable that runs from the vehicle's battery to the light bar, and the wiring connecting the lights to the board. After mounting the white light modules on the brackets and securing them to the base, workers take the colored LED modules and slide them onto the tracks on the base. They make the internal connections to the control board, then plug each module into the control board harnesses. After testing to make sure everything works properly, it's just a matter of encasing the modules, starting with an aluminum top, then slide on transparent plastic lenses with divider gaskets in between to prevent rain from penetrating and shorting out the light. A cap closes up each end After a final round of testing, the light bar is ready to hit the roof and the road.